Hello everyone and welcome to week 9 of my 52 Essential Album series. This week we're looking at Alanis Morissette's Jagged Little Pill, uh, released June 13th, 1995. Few notable tracks off this album are You Ought to Know, Hand in My Pocket, You Learn, and Ironic. Um, I think, as probably many people, their first song that they heard from this was probably You Ought to Know. I remember seeing the music video for this over the summer of 1995, and I thought, you know, thought it was pretty good. Uh, but the song that actually made me want to buy the album was when they released the music video for um, Kid in My Pocket. It's a black and white music video. Um, one of my favorite songs on the album, and that's kind of what pushed me to actually picking up this CD. So I picked it up from Columbia House with a bunch of other like iconic albums from that year. I remember getting Garbage's first album that way, uh, Foo Fighters' first album, and so on. It was like, you know, 10 CDs for like a dollar or something like that. You had to buy, you then had to pay for two full price CDs later on. Uh, anyhow, so I have some, uh, I'm gonna just go over the track list really quickly. I don't have this one on vinyl yet. I have the CD in my CD wallet and the CD case is in a box somewhere. But um, anyhow, um, I probably will pick it up pick it up on vinyl at some point. It's just that the current vinyl that's available on like Amazon, it has some, there's some reviews that saying the that are saying the pressing isn't you know all that great. So I'm kind of waiting to pick it up. I'll probably pick it up at some point. Um, anyway, track number one here is All I Really Want. Track number two is You Ought to Know. Uh, three is Perfect. Four is Hit My Pocket. Five is Right Through You. Six is Forgiven. You have You Learn at seven. Eight is Head Over Feet. Nine is Mary Jane. Ten is Ironic. Eleven, Not the Doctor. And twelve is Wake Up with thirteen be kind of like a remix of You Ought to Know. And then if you listen to the song all the way to the end of the album, the song you got a hidden track called your house so those are uh the songs you want to know is iconic it's kind of basically what put her on the map this is technically her third album i think but i kind of consider it to be a debut album because it's such a departure from the her first two albums which were more like dance kind of pop albums that were i think only available in canada um but this was basically like the international debut but i pretty much just say it's her debut album just because, like I said, it was so d different from her other two albums that came out before it. I'm going to go down the track list again just to let you know what I think of the song. So all I really want, it's a really good way to start the album. It's like, it's. I remember recording it off of the radio at one point and there's a break in the song and I didn't know that was the actual, I thought that the song was over, but it's actually just a kind of a long pause and then the song starts up again, but... Uh, I remember trying to record it off the radio and then missing that part because I had stopped recording after the break. Uh, like I said, You Ought to Know is a classic. Perfect is pretty good as well. Um, Hand in My Pocket, one of my favorite songs. Like I said, it was a song that kind of pushed me to get the album. Uh, right Through You is pretty good. Uh, Forgiven is, is pretty good as well. I Like You Learn, that's a good one. Um, Head Over Feet is pretty good. Mary Jane's all right. It's one of my favorite songs on the album. Ironic, um... Kind of funny that, this, that nothing in the song is actually ironic, but it's still a really, really good song, one of her more classic songs. Uh, Not the Doctor's pretty good. Uh, Wake Up is good as well. Then You Ought to Know, there's, like I said, a remix. So I think the album is, overall, it's an excellent album overall. I have some brief notes I took down here. Let's see what I have here. Uh, let's see. Got it from Columbia House. I already mentioned that. Uh, but this is also, this her band was kind of my introduction to Taylor Hawkins as well, because he was her touring drummer for that tour, and he, you would see him occasionally in some of the music videos, as well as, like, live performances, and I just got this vibe just from seeing him, I'm like, hey, that guy looks like he's a cool guy, like, he looks like he'd be cool to hang out with. So, that was Taylor Hawkins, and eventually joined the Foo Fighters, like, a year after the tour, because it was, like, a 95, 96 tour kind of thing. Um, I went to see this, got, there was a two years ago, or that'd be three years ago now, it would have been the 25th anniversary of this album, and they announced the tour for that year. That was, however, that was 2020, so it got pushed back a year. It got pushed back twice, actually, the one that I went to. Got pushed back from the summer of 2020 to the summer, summer of 2021, and then it got pushed back a few more months to the fall of 2021. Went to the Hollywood Bowl to see them. It was um, supposed to be Liz Fair, Garbage, and Atlantis. However, uh, Liz Fair kind of backed out, so I ended up being uh, Cat Power, Garbage, and Atlantis Board of Set. It's one of the uh, best concerts I've, concerts I've ever been to because she basically played the entire album 
with some other songs from some of her other albums. It weren't they weren't in, tr in release order, like not in album order, but it was just an amazing show. I'll have a link in the description below where you can check out the uh, songs I had recorded from that concert. So again, that was at the Hollywood Bowl. Another thing I remember about this album was she was on Modern Rock Live, like toward the end of 1995, probably in like November, maybe. I think it was November, maybe October, November. I tried to call into it, and I nine times out of ten I got a busy signal. I think one time, a couple times, it actually the, phone, the thing was actually ringing, but they weren't able to get to it, so I wasn't able to actually call in. And I remember recording that show on tape. I don't think I have the tape anymore. And I probably recorded over with something else because that was like you know, so like November nineteen ninety five. Um, when they did the single for, I forget what single it was, but it used, it was a single for, I, it may have been ironic, and then they did as, like, the B-side, like, because you usually get a couple songs when you buy a, C a single. It was um, one of the songs from that Modern Rock Live, uh, Modern Rock Live performance. Um, and she was also probably one of the first female artists I took a liking to that wasn't necessarily, like, a pop artist. Like, she was more, like, in the, like, the rock genre. So um, that is going to do it for this video. It was for, this is for Atlantis Morissette's third, technically third album, even though I consider it a debut album, uh, 1995's Jagged Little Pill. It's definitely worth checking out. Uh, one of her best albums by far, probably my favorite one. Uh, she's done uh, several other albums that have all been pretty good, but this one I think is just, just her best, I think. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe. We'll see you again next time. Thanks again for watching. Have a good one and take care.